Hello friends, welcome to engineering tutorial. So we will uh, resume our discussion on network theory and uh, so far in the previous videos related to network theory we discussed about superposition theorem. Okay, the application of superposition theorem and we discussed around five to six examples. So in this video also we will discuss the same about superposition theorem but the difference will be that uh, in this case we are going to take up some questions involving the circuits involving dependent sources. So far we discussed only about independent sources. So before doing that first we must understand the basic difference between an independent and a dependent source. So independent sources they can be voltage or current. It can be anything. When it's independent it's represented in direct way such as let's say we have a voltage source of 5 volt or 10 volt or 50 volt or 100 volt like that. Similarly independent current source it's also written in a direct way such as let's say 5 ampere 10 ampere 50 ampere 100 ampere anything okay they are independent of any other circuit parameter but the dependent voltage sources and by the term dependent you can understand that they are dependent on some other circuit parameter okay they are dependent on some other circuit parameter they can be divided into four types first a voltage controlled voltage source voltage controlled current source current controlled voltage source current controlled current source okay so let us understand what they are so this is independent sources we discussed all the questions related to independent sources in the superposition theorem so voltage controlled voltage source let us say we have a circuit like this uh, and uh, let's say we have any circuit any random circuit we have a voltage we have a resistor okay so this is the circuit here first let us consider the voltage controlled voltage source this is a voltage controlled voltage source which is represented in this way okay we have a circuit like this this is a voltage controlled voltage source how this voltage here is dependent on some other circuit parameter 0 0.1 vx means whatever voltage here it is 1 by 10 of vx the voltage drop across this resistor r1 okay so this becomes important for 
this and since it is a voltage source and it depends on the voltage across the voltage drop across this resistor R1 it means it is a voltage controlled voltage source now if here instead of this we just insert an arrowhead like this then it becomes a voltage controlled current source voltage controlled current source because here this is a current source but it depends on the voltage drop across this resistor vx so it dip, this is a current source and it depends on the voltage drop across this resistor r1 so it becomes a voltage controlled current source another voltage controls the value of this current source okay now okay now let us discuss the other two let us say again this is r1 this is r2 let us say the current flowing here is i x okay let's say this current is okay just giving you example this is the way the circuit is here this is this is a dependent current source current controlled current source and it depends on the current flowing through this resistor r2 okay so here this becomes important the deciding factor for the value of this so this is a current controlled current source this is a current source a dependent current source with value 0.5 ix where ix is the current flowing through resistor r2 because it depends on the current flowing through this resistor r2 it is dependent on it so a current controls the value of this current source that's why this is a current control current source now let us remove this arrowhead and let's put this sign then it becomes a current controlled voltage source current controlled voltage source because it is a voltage this this is a dependent voltage source and its value depends on this current flowing through r2 so another current controls the value of this voltage source so current controls the value of the voltage source that's why it is a current controlled voltage source this dependent source is a current controlled voltage source so in any circuit you will find one or more than one of these kind of dependent sources a voltage controlled voltage source a voltage controlled current source and a current controlled voltage source or current controlled current source okay so this is just the basic information which i wanted to give you uh, before discussing about the superposition theorem involving dependent sources okay so that you have a good idea so we just discussed about uh, the independent and dependent voltage sources and uh, the various types of dependent voltage sources so now we will discuss some basic concepts related to uh, loop currents and branch currents okay so loop current and branch current in order to understand that first let us draw a simple circuit okay Okay, 
So this is a simple circuit involving a voltage source independent, current source independent and R1, R2, R3, the three resistance. Here loop current if we assign, we can assign it in this way. or we can assign it in the opposite direction also like this in any direction we want we can assign both the currents loop currents in clockwise direction we can assign both of them in anti-clockwise direction okay so it's up to us to decide the branch currents will be as per this convention the branch current will be this will be I1 this will be I2 now the current flowing through R2 it depends suppose you want to take this downward direction both these currents are flowing in in the loop in clockwise and this is in anti-clockwise i1 is in clockwise i2 is in anti-clockwise so it is going downwards through r2 so it will simply be i1 plus i2 suppose you want to take the opposite direction let's say you want to take the opposite direction in this way then it will become minus i1 plus i2 okay now suppose we take this current in this way loop current in this way then this will be this way i2 okay and this one will become this is going downwards this is going upwards so if we take this downward going direction as dominant it will become i1 minus i2 if we take the upward direction as dominant if we take the upward direction as dominant then will become i2 minus i1 and i2 as you can see here i2 is an opposite direction to this current which is minus i okay so the loop currents are branch currents they come into play when we apply KVL equations in the various meshes or loops okay while applying the KVL equations during mesh analysis or while solving any circuit it is it becomes very easy first if you assign the loop currents and then you assign the branch currents okay so it depends you can assign the loop current in any direction you want but you have to be careful that the branch currents are also assigned in the same convention that you have taken okay so you always have to be careful about that now let us uh, draw another circuit involving three meshes let's say like this another resistor also here then a voltage source here and then a current source here okay this is a voltage source this is a current source this is R1 R2 R3 R4 R5 now here there are three meshes one two three so here in order to apply mesh analysis it, 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 it will be a good approach to first ap assign the loop currents in any direction you want okay but normally if you take the loop current in the same direction as this source current is the current source is it becomes easy so we have assigned in this way here let's say we have assigned in this way i2 
and here we have assigned it in this way because current always flows from a positive terminal to a negative terminal okay i1 i2 i3 clockwise clockwise anti clockwise now we have to assign the branch currents so this becomes i1 okay now this here will become if we take the downward direction become i1 going downward i2 going upward so it will be i1 minus i2 here in this case both i1 and i3 are going downwards through r2 so it will become i1 plus i3 here it is i3 okay and here it is both are going downward i2 and i3 not downward actually from right to left from right to left in this direction so this will become i2 plus i3 okay through r4 i2 plus i3 so now you can easily apply the kvl equations and another important thing i have already discussed in the previous video whenever you have a resistor r and a current flows like this we have taken this current direction like this the polarity of the voltage drop will be this okay vr equals to ir ohms law basic ohms law but students confuse about how to take the polarity so the polarity will always be like this so here if we assign the polarities it will be this plus minus current is flowing from right to left plus minus here it is flowing in this direction from left to right plus minus here it is going downwards so plus minus okay here it is going like this i2 it is going like this i2 sorry here it is i2 so here also it is plus minus okay the polarity will always be from positive to negative as the current flows through the resistor it flows internally from positive to negative okay so this is the basic concepts which i wanted to discuss with you before i go on to solve the various uh, circuits involving superposition theorem because in those circuits these things will come into play okay the various kvl equations will come into play loop currents branch currents will come into play so i wanted to, you to have a good understanding about the dependent sources and about the concept of loop and uh, branch currents and how to assign loop and branch currents and how to write the kvl equations okay